Hello everyone, it's Andy Glenn here from Sharks TV. Welcome you, welcome you all to another podcast. It's our weekly podcast with Coach Martin Grubb. Martin, how are you doing? Good Andy, how are you? Aye, okay, okay. It was a tough weekend though, wasn't it? Yeah, um, difficult weekend. Back-to-back games, um, never easy, but you know I think we... We were disappointed naturally in, in the results. I think there was a little bit of improvement for Saturday to Sunday in terms of performance, but I do have to say that, you know, I, th- I thought credit to Aaron Nell and his team because I thought Swindon were, were such an experienced team. They were very deep in their lineup and they've come and executed, especially in special teams, almost to perfection. So um, they're a good team. And unfortunately, they were just a bit better than us on the, over the weekend. Looking at the the special team stats that came out this week, they're they're top of the the NIHL table on power play. We're at the bottom. Too many penalties, and that was the that was the result, really, wasn't it? Yeah, and you know it's uh, it's always a difficult situation because clearly any team, not just ourselves, but any team, you know, any player, they don't go out to deliberately take penalties and. I guess the debate is every every week's the same. Is it a penalty? Is it not? You know, I've, the truth from my point of view is some of them are silly penalties. Some of them we've got to be accountable for. We took we took some stupid ones and we got punished. Some of them were, in my opinion, not penalties, but you can't let that affect you. So another discussion we've had about controlling our emotions and I think we took a couple of penalties on the back of some soft calls because we were frustrated. Um, and you just put yourself in a bad spot and it's it's easy for me sitting here now and, and anybody sitting here a couple of days later saying, you know, you can't do it when you're in the emotion of the game. It's it's tough, but um, th- yet again, we're talking about our penalty kill and our, and our special teams and a bit of discipline and, and it's hurting us. And, you know, we, we've, we're continually trying to address that. We'll continue to address it. Um, the penny will drop eventually that, this is how the game is officiated, especially when you... I always talk about players have to recognise their opponents and know who they're playing against. You know, obviously in this level, you also need to know who's officiating because if it's the same people which we've had... And, and if I'm honest, you know, I, I, I've felt that the standard has been the same for years. This is not about just being in the, the National League now. But we should know these people. We should know that you can't take a silly penalty... And if you do, you have to make sure you kill it. So, um, lot, you know, lots, lots to dissect and discuss on that side. And you, we could be here forever, but ultimately, when you look, as you say, at stats and and you know, even the video and the game itself, it's killing us right now. So, we uh, we need to get better. We need to be better. The players are committed to improvement, and well, we're still I keep saying it, but we are still early days against that. Clearly, we're swinging a, a very well-oiled power play. Um, but, yeah, we have to learn. Where do you reckon Swindon will finish in this league? Because you kind of you kind of indicated there that they're one of the teams you really admire. Yeah, I mean, I, I think, obviously, it's they're in a tough spot right now with, yeah. with what's happened with, with the, the rink. And, we, you know, we alluded to that last week in the kind of pre, pre-game side of it that, you know, we had kind of hoped to take advantage of that and... You know, speaking to Aaron now, Aaron's a friend of mine and you know, somebody I respect, is that this has kind of brought them a little bit closer together as well, the situation. So I think once they get back in, uh, back into their facility, which is hopefully sooner rather than later for them and their fans, I think they motor on, you know. Let's not forget, they've beat Leeds and Leeds this year. They've, they've shown how good a team they are against us. Friday night, they're going to play Milton Keynes away. We'll see. We've been there. We know it's a difficult place. We'll see how they fare in that game. Obviously, we've got to go to Cardiff to play them this weekend. Um, but traditionally, they're, they're a top four team. They're, they've always been that top four, maybe top five on, on kind of their worst years. So they're a top end team with a lot of experience um, and, and tough to play against. And, you know, I think you know, I look at somebody like Aaron himself, he's got more. National League games under his belt as an individual than our whole team. So they, they are a very, very experienced team. They know how to play. And I think right now people are underestimating them because of the, the, the situation yeah. with their ice rink. Um, but I was really impressed. I thought they were a good team. Um, and, and I think 
like any coach, Aaron striving at this stage for some consistency for his group. And you know, if they can kick on for the weekend, that they've just shown us how good they are. They'll be dangerous. Yeah, they brought a wonderful set of fans as well. Large number of fans. It was fair play to them because it's a fair distance, isn't it? No, it was great to see, and I think they added, you know, they added to the atmosphere. Our fans reacted to to the opposition having a, a good group and a noisy group with them, and. I think both days, it was credit to both sets of fans, but you're right, it's a long distance. We, we've travelled that this this yeah. week. Um, but you've got to give them credit. And it, you know what, I think it's, it's, it was probably easier and a bit more exciting for them to come to a double header. First time they'd been here. Yeah. M maybe the first time for ever in this rink for a lot of people. I know um, Owen interviewed Sam Bullis after the first game. He had never been in, in our rink and played here. And I think the positive, regardless of, of the results, the positive is that, they've had a good time they've been treated well as we always expect you know as, as a club as a facility as a bunch of people here we know people enjoy coming here um, I'd like opposition teams not to enjoy uh, <laughs> playing here quite quite as much if I'm honest in, in, in a good respectful way but um, you know I'm pleased to see that our opponents are, are bringing fans with them they're enjoying the hospitality and the professionalism of this club and this facility and and our fans are reacting to that by, yet again over the weekend, continuing to make a lot of noise and, and try and drive our team on. There were some positives from the weekend, though. Um, I think the first period on Sunday, when we finished 3-1 up, showed that we could um, certainly hold our own with a team of Swindon's calibre. I don't know what you thought. Um, yeah, no, I, I liked our start on, on Sunday. Um, I think the, the response was was exactly what we wanted. Um, I think it finished 3-2. Um, was it 3-2? Yeah, yeah, just sorry. after Aaron called his, his time out, which, you know, like any good coach, you would you call it the right time, you get a response. And he actually, he scored just in front of our bench, a give and go. Um, him and Malazinski, who, as we've seen all weekend, are dangerous. He, was brilliant, he, wasn't he? I think if we get in 3-1, it's a slightly different game, but they scored just after that time out to go 3-2 and it gives them confidence and... Um, so, yeah, you're right. Our first period was better. Um, I think our middle period let us down. And our third period was better again. You know, we won a, we've won a period and we've tied a period. And unfortunately, the one that we lost was by too much and it killed us with lack of discipline. But I think well, there was some positives in terms of, I think, three, maybe four, but certainly three of our goals were on a power play. Um, we deliberately pulled the goalie in a six and four situation to see if... You know, if we could have been a little bit earlier, who knows if a miracle could have happened, but I think it's the right thing to do and try, and we scored on that, scored which right. in games before we've conceded with an empty net. Um, we got some more traffic on our power play, we shot the puck a bit more. So there, there was definitely um, more positives as the weekend kind of progressed. The challenge now is to, to you know, take as many of these positives into our game on a consistent basis and moving forward. Um, add the bits that we've been missing and that's the key now is just learning and adding um, you know this week Tuesday so far has been predominantly based on our defensive zone and our, and our penalty kill and um, we know we've got areas and we're, we're you know let's not hide it every week we're going to have areas to develop um, for different different opponents and different teams but um, we go back into another game with Swindon this weekend they kind of will expect roughly what, what they expect from us. We are hoping to spring a little shock and maybe change a couple of things to for us to be better. I think they'll play very similar because that's the way they are. They're experienced, they're well they're well drilled and it worked for them. I was going to so, say, um, yeah. You know, we've got to learn for that and we'll stay at the box and we'll see where we are. Yeah, I think they'll fancy their chances this weekend and I think coming on the back of a four-point weekend for them, they'll maybe fancy their chances at Milton Keynes as well. And they've got every right to. I mean... I think we we seen how we when we knew how we felt and reacted on the back of a four point weekend. Um, I know it was their first one and it's on the road, and it's you know for any team like that, obviously it's bad for us. It's great for them, but they've they've no reason to go into Milton Keynes and and feel like they can't get a result. Milton Keynes also again our other opponent this weekend, but they're also a very strong deep team and showed their quality when we played them away. I think that'll be a really good hockey game. I guess the hope is that the both tire each other out, maybe knock lumps out each other, um, and they're struggling when they come to play us. We'll, we'll take that, but yeah, you know, I would expect that to be a high, high quality, high caliber national national league game, um, and I would expect both the teams to be right up at the top end, along with the likes of Leeds at the end. Um, but we've got to prove that we can play with that. We've done it a few weeks ago against Hull, 
who then just went and, and beat Milton Keynes yep. um, on the weekend. So you look at that, and um, you know, you and I discuss this regularly. Anybody can beat anybody, and I think the likes of Hull beating Milton Keynes, uh, Swindon beating Leeds, etc. That top end will continue to beat each other. We've got to look at the moment at teams around us and realise that's our fight. Maybe not necessarily the top end teams, but you still got to go in trying to spring a surprise and try and get some confidence and valuable points. Ah, yeah, maybe it's a free shot for us this weekend. You know, two top teams. Nobody really expects us to win, apart from maybe ourselves. Well, I, I say it to the players every week, right? If if we get beat by a better team, sometimes you just got to tip your hat to them. Fair play. If yeah. you get beat by lack of discipline, lack of work rate, and just making the same mistakes every week, we've got to look at ourselves because we've not made the opposition work hard enough. So that the free hit in terms of this weekend for me is yes, we're playing you know, on a team that's beat us back to back and and potentially are expected to be us. And we're playing a team that's sitting second in the league right now um, on our home ice after a long travel from from Cardiff. But in the same respect, our group I know. And I know obviously myself and Jamie, we're going in there still expecting to yeah. to compete and, and battle for four points. So there is a free hit in one respect, but we won't be expecting us not to work as hard, if not harder than them, and execute our game plan and give ourselves and our supporters hopefully something to cheer about. Man, another positive from Sunday's game was starting that minder, um, Curtis Warburton, who came back from his injury. How did you feel that went from his perspective? Um, you know, it was nice to see Curtis first and foremost back. Um, I think it's been frustrating time for him. I know having spoken to him, he's, I mean, he's been desperate to get back between the pipes as quick as he could. Um, but on the flip side, the, you know, with, with a 60-game season, you can't rush a guy back from injury to have him set back much longer. So it's definitely been a frustrating start for Curtis. He, he obviously played that one game in Sheffield and they won it. Um, and then he was injured. So it's... It's nice to see him back. I thought that he, he definitely felt his way into the game. Um, you know, first five, ten minutes, he, I wouldn't say he looked nervous, but he, he was feeling his way in. It was, it was natural after so long, um, you know, without being in a, in a game. It's all right practising, but getting the, getting the game speed is, is a bit different. I also think it was nice to to allow Callum, who, who let's be clear, has done nothing wrong here, has been... He's done a sterling job for us, and he's been he's been outstanding. But I don't think any of the goalies, whether it be Callum or Curtis, should have to carry that workload on their own. So it was nice to be able to see Curtis and, and Callum be able to work together over the yeah. weekend, help each other out. Um, and I thought both of them, you know, have, have have done a good job. But Curtis will kick on. Um, the goalies will kick on, and I think that you know we're we're, we're in the midst here, of making a couple of additions. And to to our our group here that can can help them on an off ice basis as well. Well, before you mentioned those those additions of off ice, you talked about Curtis being frustrated. I'm frustrated. I see how many folk watch these videos that know everybody's liking, sharing, and subscribing. So pay your fees, like, share, and subscribe, please. And if you do, you get to hear exclu exclusives like this. Yeah, I guess this is a, a, a Sharks exclusive. Um, we are sp goalie specific. We're gonna we're gonna bring in a, a goaltending consultant who is a person that I know really well. It happens to be my brother. Um, so for people that don't know, it's Colin Grubb. Um, he currently works with the Odessa Jackalopes in the NHL um, in North America. He works for USA Hockey as a, a goalie chief with them. Um, He's a consultant with other teams in North America. And he's been desperate, to be honest, as an ex-Shark, he's been desperate to help us and our goalies. Um, so he's going to do quite a bit of remote coaching, breaking down the games, um, Zoom stuff with not only Callum and Curtis, but young Logan as well will, get, will be involved in that. So that, you know, we, we just have that specialist knowledge. And obviously it's a guy that, that I trust that can can help us. He wants to help us. We want we want the help. Um, so I think having spoke to to John and Phil and David, as they have been for day one, they are desperate to support not only myself but the players and the club in general moving forward. So we're delighted to be able to to announce that Colin will be joining us on a consultancy basis. He will do a lot of work with our goalies and uh, 
keep your eyes peeled on the, on the website as well for the kind of full story and, and full bio of, of what he's going to be doing. Um, but no, I'm really happy, really happy to be able to to certainly provide the goalies with some help and provide this team with some help. And I think it will be a, a really good fit for us moving forward. Um, it's a wonderful resource. I mean, it's obviously not because Colin's your brother. I mean, most Sharks fans will know the, how good a keeper he is and all his credentials that go along with that. But if you're if you're not aware of Colin and his history in hockey, it's worth having a wee a wee look around. And as Martin says, keep an eye on the the web page. Um, I'm guessing the goalies know about this. Yeah, I mean he, he's. Um... I'm just, I'm really just want to know how are the goalies about this. I mean, I, I'm guess I guess, um, Callum, Callum, Logan, and Curtis will be just overjoyed to get that additional help. Yeah, um, I spoke to them and and explained that we were bringing Colin in. Obviously, first and foremost, as, as you've just rightly said, for his his ability as a as a coach, as a goalie coach. I mean, um, in that now league that he's in in Odessa, he, he had a guy last year now playing NCAA Division One. His current goalie is uh, very very close as we speak. It looks like to get a tender to go. So the credentials there are, are huge, first and foremost. The trust elements there. But our goalies are, are delighted. They just want help. Um, you know, obviously, between myself and Jamie and, and each other, they support each other. But to have a, a specialist, if you like, and I have to say Gary Russell, who obviously has played here, um, and Brayhead it was at the time, has been helping Callum a lot more. And, and we can see the improvements there. And, and it's a maybe, hopefully, it's a watch this space and we can involve Gary a lot more on a on a more permanent oh, well, basis. More permanent basis as well. Because I think we need to grow that and it can help all our young goalies as well. So That's a long term development that thing though or do you expect to see immediate improvements a bit of both I think really? I mean I've spoke to Colin and he's very confident that there can be immediate improvements wow. on some small things um, which will help both obviously us as a team and, and the, the goalies um, but yeah ultimately it's also very much a, a longer term for both or for all three of the goalies we've got you know, it helps Logan massively as well in his development and I think that the key thing that bringing a specialist in does is he's going to help them be the best version of Callum Curtis and Logan as opposed to trying to change their game and, and you know, tell them to, to make saves like, a, let's for example, an NHL goalie. Um, everybody's individual. He understands. He'll make them and their style better rather than trying to change it. And uh, that's one of the keys. If we can if we can see some short-term immediate improvement, we'll be delighted with that, as with the goalies. And... Uh, then again, as I say, if we can try and add somebody like Gary who trying to twist his arm, then we'll get even stronger and it's just a good long-term plan for us. I'm still amazed watching the hockey from behind the goals this this season, just how quick it is and how quick the reactions are, uh, the keepers as is. I mean, it's just, it, it, it's just mind-blowing, it really is. Yeah, I mean, obviously, I've, obviously I've grown up with that with Colin being a goalie and... Um, like when I came here in '98, as first my first role as a player coach, anyway, that was my first signing, and I think then after that, Northern League level, Gary Russell was then my first signing, and I've always tried to build for strong goaltending, and if we can help our guys provide us with that, because that's what they're striving to do. You look at a, uh, you know, I thought Rennie Marr was was good at key times over the weekend. Sam Gospel, we've seen a few times, has been outstanding goalie in this league. Jordan Headley made some great saves from Milton Keynes. Every team's the same, right? You're striving for a guy that can steal your points. And if we can help our goalies do that and help our team do that and add to the to the amazing ability they've already got, then yeah. you're happy days. Okay, so there's some exclusive news for everybody. I um, hope you hope you like that. Um, moving on to Coach's Corner um, this week, Martin, you've, you've picked some of the highlights. We're not going to go through all the goals. The highlights are, are on... The Sharks TV channel on YouTube. If you want to watch the whole highlights with Owen, um, with, with Anthony Russell and with uh, Mason summarising in the two games, they're there. So go and have a go and have a look and enjoy. But doing Coach's Corner, we get Martin's insight into a couple of key things that he wants to draw our attention to. So over to Martin now for Coach's Corner. Yeah, like you see, Andy, over, I think over the, the two games, there was a lot of goals scored um, on both sides. So... We, we've we've broke some of them down. Um, I think we start with some of the, the goals for Saturday. 
where initially, you know, Liam pulls that puck out of the air. Scotty, we've been working on what we call that slash guy um, coming through. Good shot. We've been asking for a bit of a rebound and a second presence. As you can see for this one here, we turn the puck over, um, which we've not done enough of. And it's a, it's a positive for us at that stage. Um, and shooting the puck has been a, a bit of focus for us. But then we we can end it up behind. It's a little bit messy when you uh, when you look at that one and, and you can actually go go back on some of these. That was just a bad break. We're back on penalty kill again. Um, you know, we're in decent spots, but they just move that puck around. We we think we've got them to the outside. Maybe we get out of structure a little bit. We talked about Libwelli and I'm and, and shooting the puck and you know, I think Cal was a little bit unsighted on that one. And then we, we, we kind of just get ourselves just a little bit muddled up um, chasing a game. But that, as soon as you go behind at any point, you're, you're obviously chasing a game. I'd like us to be a little bit more aggressive up ice. This one was a just a complete breakdown um, for us and, a, and a, a goal I was not happy with, um, to tell the truth. Then we, we kind of clawed ourselves back in and I deliberately got this one as, you know, I thought we're in a good spot there with three guys killing. Nolan sees a puck he thought he could get to. This part here where you see that puck, it's right going across what we call the seam. It's going from Malazinski right across here and then back it gives them a chance to score. We we literally make that, I wouldn't even call it a mistake, we just get out of our structure, um, and that's the fine margins that are ending up in our net right now. And then again, we're uh, showing this one where a turnover, again, a turnover on the blue line, we have it in our possession. It's just a bit too easy for Aaron to get, get in on net there, and it's kind of hurting us, so... But we we then tried, uh, you know, we tried to get something going. We've discussed our power play for a while. And I think this was maybe a start for the weekend for us where, you know, it's a shot. You see Dunny come in there and kind of stuff it in at the back post. And I guess what you maybe call a, a wee bit more of an ugly goal. We've not scored enough of them. So it was, it was probably key for us to not only get a power play goal there, but to get something just of a, of a shooting the puck. We're, we're, we've not been shooting the puck enough, so there was just little elements of that kind of stuff that we've been looking to work on. We've allowed them to collapse down, um, and it was better for us. And then we asked we asked players, and this is a perfect example, and you're going to see Scotty Henderson's goal. We asked them to open their legs up a little bit more, and you can see Scotty, you know, he just skates just skates straight down the ice, you know, he keeps his legs moving. Coming over the blue line, we've been stopping moving our legs and, and allowing teams to get back in their structure. And with that one, it was just straight line speed for Scotty. It was something that we've been, you know, anybody that's been coming to watch us for the last few years, they've seen him do numerous times. He's getting a bit more like the old Scotty, hasn't it? Yeah, isn't I, mean, it? I mean, to be fair to Scotty, uh, he knows it and he admits it. He said he kind of started a little bit slower than he would have liked. He was he was adjusting to the new level. He's got um, you know him and Demi have got a baby on the way, and a wee personal life's changed a little bit in that respect. So, um, but hopefully goals like that just he builds just, the confidence. Yeah, it just that, and I think that's probably the key word. He just needed he needed to find a couple of goals um, and find some confidence. And I think over the last couple of weeks, he's he's definitely done that. And even even in, in little pockets of the video, I was looking at. Um, during this week here, there was a couple of chances. Yes, you know, Rennie made a really good save. It was the Sunday we had a good look and he was in the in what we'd call the bumper slot in the in the on the power play. But he's creating the chances now. And I always say to, to teams, but especially to forwards, you know, if you're creating chances, we're doing something right. Of course you want to finish as many as you can, but if you're not creating chances, you've got to start to worry. And early doors he was probably not creating as much as he would like, but now he's creating um, and he's scoring. And he's a, such a popular player with the fans. Yeah, he really is. He's he's a he's a quality person. Yeah. Um, 
and he's a quality hockey player and he's got something a little bit different. He brings a bit of size. Um, so it was nice. It was nice to see Scotty and obviously you know, as a group we enjoyed it and as we see just as a part of that replay, it was just straight line speed. Um, oh, but it's just, and again, it, this is where the frustration probably for, for not only myself but the fans and the group comes in because we get ourselves back in games and, you know, we look like we're we're doing all right, and then a little bit of defensive breakdown in that for me was just a bit of a soft goal. When I stop it here, you know, we we're, we're in a situation where we should be in a good spot here, good defensive zone coverage, but we make one little mistake where our, our winger, our number four guy, as we call him, he, we don't want him down. Kind of where uh, I was going to see for the cursor where Kieran is, we want him off off the wall, they're going to hit the gap where he was mm -hmm. up to the top and it ends up going to the net as a kind of free shot. And then once it goes to the net, anything can happen. So, um, just to a rock of players. When yeah, you just get, out. you get frustrated. Um, and then, you know, left, we, we think we're, we think we're in a good spot where, again, we're, we're killing penalties. We make a change, which is the right thing to do. And this was just to highlight more Swindon's ruthlessness, I suppose. It's just a great little pass across on the rush. Um, You've got to admire the goals, though, haven't you? Oh, 100%. Like, I guess with any team, you've got to, you've still got to score the goals. Um, and then this one, I had to leave in because just the captain doing what the captain does. He's, nice goal, wasn't it? I mean, he's picked the puck up and. How many times, again, long-term fans have seen Struan go on his mazy runs, if you want to call it that. But He it, normally rounds the keeper when he goes on his mazy runs and he's coast to coast. That was a bit more... It's getting a bit older, at least, maybe. It's didn't they want to skate as far, was far, that? Way a bit too far. But again, you know, it's that leadership of we want and, and we need from our from our captain of that's the important part. Um, just kind of very quickly on the... Well, you're changing that. I mean, I know Struan after the after the match said he didn't really think much. He didn't care for the goal because it was the result, yeah. and that's always what what Struan will say. But you know, hockey fans go there and they appreciate those moments of brilliance. You know, and maybe your team gets beat, but you see a fantastic goal, and that's that that's a, something that you know. I hope I hope players recognise as well yeah, that think, you know like, they don't dismiss it. Play no, because fans watch and love these these moments. I think when you've got, especially you've got a guy like Struan, who obviously has been the captain and leader here for oh, sleep, for quite that. some time, that his team is always ahead of himself, which yeah. is one of his, his unique traits. Um, but I think what he do, what he probably doesn't appreciate and, and should is that that was the last goal of the game for us, and it probably helped us kickstart as we kind of mm -hmm. go on a little bit to Sunday. Um, it helped us kickstart a little bit of belief and knowing that if we we get some traffic, we shoot pucks, if we kind of trust ourselves. It's like we said earlier with, with Curtis's situation, we found ourselves one nothing down. I mean, I'll say nothing to do with, with Curtis as such. It was a, a breakdown for us. But then we started to to play a little bit on the Sunday. And, you know, for this, you could we could see that we we end up winning battles. We end, we end up being able to get out of the zone. We've got that, we'll call it slash guy coming through again. Second phase with Nolan, he drives off the guy's shoulder really well and across Rennie Marr and thought that was a really good finish. It was a nice goal. Um, provided us with a, with a spark after after going one down and losing the night before, it could have been kind of really easy to to fold a wee bit. Then again, just some ozone time for us now and I think Boyd, as usual, provides the spark for us and Kel shoots the puck, and here's a scrum. It's something that we've not done enough of. It's a scrum, we find a loose puck. And again, credit to Boydie, he finds it and he pops that in the back of the net for us. Then we get to the little adjustments we've made in the PP. You see Olivier shooting the puck. We've retrieved a puck better than than the previous nights. Again, it gets to the top with that pass to, to Dunny. And again, our first thought is shoot the puck, and, and we find the... We find a loose puck and credit again to Nolan for finding that and, and putting that in the net. And you know, we found ourselves, I think, in a good spot here. Then uh Swindon called their called their time out and this was probably a, a a big goal for them. A little give and go. We we lose Aaron just off that give and go and 
I think we go in 3-1 up in a slightly different spot but 3-2 then this was actually uh, on the back of a a, a bad you know, well, definitely a bad second period we you know we we go behind well they equalise then we end up going behind and then off a blatant icing and when we lose our mind and there's a little clips here but it's to show that their their puck movement their puck movement's really good um on the power play we we've got as we clearly said some areas again puck movement is, is was just opening us up a bit too much um as soon as we get out of structure there's a bit of tic-tac-toe play i'm gonna left that in if i'm honest because it's just a nice goal you've got to give them credit but here's the one where they get ahead we get a we we, we kind of start to lose ourselves you see here that puck that's a nice and all day long Yes, we we kind of take our, our eye off it a little bit, turn it over, and it ends up in our net. You know, Peaks gets very frustrated on the back of what, as we say, was a blatant ice, and we end up losing another one, and we put ourselves in a bit of a spot there. Um, and yet again, showing that we're back on the PK, and it was just a bit too much, too much time spent killing penalties. This one, we thought we were able to keep them to the outside, and... Even there, they find a find a bit of a seam play, um, which again becomes frustrating. But it shows that you know we, we were determined. We weren't going to go away. We had a bit more character. Again, we are uh, we are in the power play, and I know there was frustrations online and stuff, and and from ourselves for the couple of weeks earlier on a five and three. But we show here we. I kind of felt for her, um, Nolan and that because that was his hat trick. That was his hat trick goal, and it wasn't the announced as yeah, it wasn't as such. And, and, uh, it's um, no, I think it was just patience, and again, it was Nolan's finding himself more and more often now in the right spot at the right time, and credit to him for finding that. So he seems to be getting better week on week. I think, hundred percent. I think we've discussed before, you know, having to adapt to a slightly different um, style of hockey, and you know, a lot more ice time than. And kind of been used to being logged. Um, it's tough. But we get ourselves back in, and then again, you know, Malazinski, it's a rocket, but it's a five on three. And too many times over the weekend, we find ourselves with three guys on the ice. Um, yeah, you've said to me many times before, when it's five on three, you've got to have an element of luck to survive it. Yeah, and then, you know, this last one, we pulled the goalie here to try and uh, give ourselves a chance. Again, you'll see that we're kind of shooting the puck more. We've got guys um, trying to take the goalie's eyes away. And, you know, we get our rewards. So there's, like we discussed earlier, there's definitely some positives. Um, and it kind of hopefully shows people that we are making adjustments because I know it's frustrating. I, mean, I know better than anybody how frustrating it is as a coach of this team wanting to make these adjustments and hoping for us to be better and learn. And, you know, I, I can only imagine that fans from the Saturday to the Sunday, they want to see an improvement. They want to see us learn. And yes, we're not learning everything, but right now I think some of these clips will just show that we are we are trying to make these adjustments from Saturday night to Sunday night shooting the puck more, getting traffic in front of the goalie. We've had two or three goals there that were scrambles that were never going in before. Um, so offensively, I think I think the frustrating part is I'd like to, would like to be that team that if you score four and five at home, you should win the game. Yeah. Um, and unfortunately, a bit, of, a bit of lack of discipline and a bit of um, ruthless hockey for, for Swindon at times has, has hurt us. But a lot of clips there, for us to work on a lot of clips that we can take credit and and heart from but it's now about every single practice every single game putting our best foot forward learning making adjustments um as i say you know it's i think the work rate's there i think that the want and the desire for the players are there but we just need to we need to realize that that was a very experienced team and we're not going to get that experience without playing in this league but we would like to I guess we're impatient. We'd like to we'd like to do it quicker than it's happening at the moment. And I think one or two big results change everything. Um, and hopefully it starts this weekend. 
Well, we'll not talk too much about this weekend because you already mentioned it, but what should we be looking out for? Well, I, I think that it's it'll be interesting in terms of playing in Cardiff. It might be a leveller. You know, I, I don't know. They've, they've I think uh, they said that they'd skated there a couple of times, but they've predominantly been skating in Bristol. It's a bit of smaller ice than Cardiff. We are, we are I think, a little bit better on the bigger ice because we're, we're a good skating team. So hopefully it's a bit of a leveller. Um, you know, I'd like to see us, just like the, the kind of clips we've went over, I'd like to see our power play fire again. I'd like to see our, our guys kind of shoot the puck a bit more, create these, these bits of scrums and traffic. I don't expect anything different for Swindon because I think, as, we, as we've discussed, they are experienced and it's worked. You know, it's worked for them. They will they will expect us to take penalties, so we've got to be better there. And, and even when we do, we've got to be better on the PK. And, and the focus of practice this week has been a lot on that defensive side of things in PK. So hopefully we can we can make an immediate improvement and an adjustment that, that works for us. Sunday, um, you know, difficult travel. I think, you know, we may, we may not end up back in our beds till 5 a.m., um, up back at the rink for two for the pre-game meetings but you know the players will sleep and they'll on the bus and they'll rest and they'll rehydrate etc so I think we've just got to come with the home game with intensity um, you know Milton Keynes have still got to travel here and, and leave early in the same respect so um, they're a good team I think people enjoy watching them but we've got to be better than them we've got to work harder than them we've got to block shots we've got to stick together and, and ultimately over the weekend I just want us to try and reveal regardless of Obviously, we won four points, but regardless of the result, I want us to play with pride. I want us to play with character and, and kind of show our true selves. I don't think we've... Maybe that whole game is the one game so far that you could say was... I think we, you and I, again, we discussed closer to Sharks hockey. I think every week we need to get yeah, it was the 60, best version 60, of ourselves. 60 minutes of brilliance, it really was. Yeah, and we need that best version of ourselves. And if everybody can bring their own A game, and who knows, we've... we've it's one team against another team for 60 minutes and if we can pick someone up ideally on the road we bring that confidence back to try and pick someone up at home but you know I, nothing changes for me people might say it's unrealistic with the spot we're in but I want four I want and I can expect four points every weekend and I know it's no went our way so far but that won't change how how I am and how I want our group to be and they're they're hungry and desperate to to start picking up points um, but we'll go and do our best I've got a positive feeling about this weekend. I don't, I, in fact, I very rarely, if ever, say say it. But I've got a positive feeling about this weekend. So let's hope we can uh, we can do what we we can and play to our potential. And I think, as you've said many a time, if we play to potential and get beat, fair play. That's all right. Better team won in the day. Hundred percent. Like you've got, I see, you've got to give everything you've got. You've got to play for that crest on the front and and play with pride and. You know, at the end of that, if someone is better than you, at least you can look yourself in the you can in the mirror, look in the eye, and say, "I've I've done everything I've done." Um, you're but make, if we play our best, I think we're we're capable of beating anybody on our day. You're you're making me uh, reminisce about the the time two seasons ago when we played the the clan here, because we played brilliant and we got beat by a a better team, a professional hockey team at, at that time, but everybody was still happy. Because we put the best effort in, didn't we? Yeah, I see. I think we've just got to bring the best. We've got to, you know, the players have got to bring the best version of themselves. Let, let myself, let Jamie, you know, let us deal with the, the kind of the video, the game plans, the tactics, the systems, the, the coaching. You know, let us deal with that. Bring the best version of yourself. Bring your work rate. You know, bring your heart out with you, and be ready to go to war here and. Let's let's see what we can do. All I think, even as a fan of the sport and of sports teams, all I can ask if I'm sitting in the, in the kind of armchair is that, yeah, they they roll their sleeves up and they do their best. You know, speak to your your kids and stuff now and say, enjoy it, yeah, and work hard and and that's what we need to do. We need to start playing with a smile on our faces again. We need to start bringing the best version of ourselves with our work rate and, you know, sooner rather than later that turns round and. We get ourselves in a run, and why not start Saturday? Okay, just before we get to the final message to the fans, I'd just like to say thanks everyone for tuning in and watching. But Martin, last message to the fans before we go. Again, just uh, we keep preaching this bit of patience here. 
it's, it's thanks for the support, thanks for the noise. You know, I think it's been getting better and better every week. We appreciate you guys as, as fans. Um, these players are doing everything they can. They're obviously not out there getting beat on purpose, making mistakes on purpose. Let's just look to ourselves. Let's concentrate on ourselves as, as, a, as a Sharks family and let's keep showing everybody in, in this league why, why we are the best club out there because we're supporting each other. We're doing all we can to get success for each other. And uh, hopefully we can start that properly here on Saturday night. Martin, thanks as always for taking the time to chat with me. Everyone, thanks so much for watching. Um, again, remember to like, share and subscribe. And we'll catch you again very soon. This is Andy Glenn saying cheerio.